In this next example, we're going to learn some basic modeling operations. I'm going to start by creating a simple rectangular sketch with an X length of 6 inches, a Y length of 4 inches, and I'm going to locate this right at 0, 0 by hitting Enter on my keyboard. Next, I'm going to go to my Shape icon bar, select Extrusion. I'm going to change to a different color, select my sketch. Top solid will dynamically go into our extrusion mode, and I'm going to say that I want to extrude this up for 1 inch 875. This arrow here represents the, oops, I've gone the wrong way direction arrow. Next, I'd like to apply some draft to this. So I'm going to go to my draft function, and I'm going to start by just simply typing 5 degrees, hitting enter, and selecting the face that I want to apply the draft to. In this case, though, I want to put a different draft angle on all four vertical faces. Instead of having to run the function four times, I'm just going to type the next angle I want to work with. I want to put 10 degrees on this face here, I want to put 15 degrees, and I'm going to use Select Other by holding my left button down, tapping my right to get a face that's behind it on that face there. I'm going to say 25 degrees on the face furthest from us, again using the Select Other method. I'm going to compute draft from my XY positive plane. If I click on the letter Z of the compass and look straight down at it, you can see that I've applied four different draft angles in one simple step. Next, I'm going to switch to an isometric view again. I'm going to right click on my compass, go to Perspective, and I'm going to go to Fill It, which is the icon just to the left of draft. Here, I'm going to start with a simple quarter inch radius. I'm going to select that edge right there, and here you can see a dynamic preview of it. What's nice about this is when we're in the simple radius function, I can type all the values I want and it'll dynamically preview it. For example, that's a 5 inch radius. How about a 10 inch radius? How about a 15 inch radius? Top solid is very powerful at filleting. If I compute it, it applied the 15 inch radius relative to that edge. And you can see how many faces it actually modified. Actually, I'm going to hit Global Undo, go back to the beginning, and I'm going to say, you know what? I'm going to switch to Shape. Select the shape, and it's going to apply my 400 thousandths radius, in this case, to all sharp edges. If I wanted it, I could hit Compute Fillets. But in this case, I'm going to hit Global Undo again, and this time, switch to Several Radius. In Several Radius, I'm going to start with a 1 inch fillet on this edge, and using the Select Other method, get the edge back furthest from me. I'm now going to say I want to put a half inch fillet here, and how about an eighth inch fillet there? I'm going to go ahead and compute fillets. So there we've put multiple different radiuses on in one simple step. Next, I want to apply a 3 eighths fillet to this top edge. Most softwares out there would fail at this point because it's impossible to switch or to pass a 3 eighths fillet along an eighth inch inside corner. However, Top Solid is pretty smart and figures it out for us automatically. Next, I'm going to look straight down at this in a plan view. Go back to my sketcher, choose contour or rectangular, why not? I'm going to pick a couple of points, there and there, and how about here and here. I'm going to use these two curves that are currently located underneath my part to put a boss in a pocket on this part. I'm going to go back to Shape Tools, I'm going to go to Boss, choose the face that I want to apply the boss to, choose the curve that I want to use for my boss, and I'm going to say for the height, I'm going to make a 5 eighths of an inch, when it gets there, I want an eighth inch fillet on the top. Anywhere there's a vertical sharp corner, I want a quarter inch radius. Where it blends with the rest of the model, I want an eighth inch fillet. And how about five degrees draft calculated from the bottom of the boss? Here you can see Top Solid does a lot of work for you dynamically. The only rules here is that your sketch has to be parallel with the planar face that you want to apply it to. Next, I'm going to apply a pocket to this face using that curve. I'm going to go down 3 eighths of an inch from that face. When I get there, I want an eighth inch radius all the way around the bottom. Anywhere there's a vertical sharp corner, I want a quarter inch blend. Again, I want a blend fillet where it meets the rest of the model of a sixteenth of an inch, and how about three degrees draft? Here you can see Top Solid again did a lot of work for you. Not only did it go down, but it went up and put in all these beautiful blends automatically for you. Now, let's go make a change. Let's go to Modify Parameter, select this face, Say, let's switch from 25 degrees to 35 degrees. Notice that the update did not fail. Many softwares would have, because the boss and fillets were put in after this drafted face. Therefore, it would have failed because it didn't know that this boss can also go down into the model. Within Top Solid, you can see that we continue regardless. Let's make another change. How about we say from 35 to 45? Well, that's pretty impressive, because now it's actually intersecting with the pocket as well. Let's undo that. Let's try 55. Up oh, and there we broke it. How about 50? There we go. 
pretty impressive. Next, let's go ahead and simple drilling. Here in dynamic mode, I'm just going to pick a face to apply my drilling to. I'm going to say, how about a hole plus counterboard? My through hole is going to be quarter inch. My counterboard hole is going to be half inch, three eighths deep. If I hit apply, there's your counterboard hole. How about if we apply one, I don't know, right there? And this will be a hole plus tapping. Why not? We'll say it's an ANSI hole. We'll say it's a uh, 3 8 16. The depth of the tapping we're going to say is 875 thousandths. And we're going to say no for through type. Say OK. In top solid, you can see that our tapped holes actually look tapped. More importantly, in draft, they'll be documented correctly. Now, when you're applying drillings, you can actually create a pattern dynamically. You can go to propagate, for example, linear. I'm going to say linear in that direction going that way. I'm going to say my total distance in this case is going to be an inch and a half. And I'm going to say I want four of them. Why not? At this point, maybe we want to make this a thin wall plastic part. So I'll go to shell, select the part. For the thickness of my plastic part, I'm going to say it's 60 thousandths. And I want to pierce that face right there. And away we go. So these are just some of your basic solid modeling operations.